Okay, so in this video we want to um, refresh our memories when it comes to solving exponential equations. Um, so I guess two key things when we're solving exponential equations. One, familiarity with our index laws, so we'll just quickly review those. Um, so we know that when we are multiplying two um, exponents with the same base, or two, um, two powers with the same base, we add the exponents. So a to the power of m times a to the power of n equals a to the power of m plus n. Similarly, when we're dividing, um, dividing two powers with the same base, we subtract the exponents. So a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is a to the power of m minus n. When we're applying one power after another, one exponent after another, a to the power of m and then all of that to the power of n, we multiply those exponents together. So a to the power of m times n or mn. And anything to the power of zero is one. We also need to be familiar when we're working with powers of our order of operations. Now, some people learn bod mass, some people learn bid mass. Um, in America, they tend to talk about PEMDAS, parentheses, and exponents. Okay, So there's lots of different versions, but the key thing is brackets. We're all familiar with brackets, division and multiplication, addition and subtraction. This one's the one that gets lost because Primary teachers tend to tell you that means of, and that actually means order, which is powers. Okay, or exponents. So it's the second, after brackets, that's the first thing you do. So um, I say that in the context of this a to the power of zero, because people get themselves in a bit of a jumble when they have things like 2x to the power of zero. That's not 2x all to the power of zero. There's no brackets there. There's multiplication in the two times x, and there's a power. So our order of operations tells us we do the powers first, x to the power of zero is one, and therefore we have two times one, which is two, okay? So it's really important that we are familiar with where the powers fit in our order of operations when working with um, expressions involving exponents. The second important thing when we are solving exponential equations is the one-to-one -one property of exponential functions. And that tells us that if we know that a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of y, then the only way that that is true is if x equals y, okay? So it's really important this one-to-one -one idea. So for example, x if x squared equals y squared, that doesn't necessarily mean that x equals y because x could be positive 3 and y could be negative 3 and that statement would still be true, okay? Because parabolas aren't one-to-one -one functions. However, if we have a number to the power of x equal to a number to the power of y, exponentials are one-to-one -one functions, and if they are the same thing, the only way they are same if, is if that power equals that power. That's our fundamental um, starting point when we're trying to solve um, exponential equations. It is possible to use logarithms when solving exponential equations, and we'll review that over the next two videos. But our first attempt when we're trying to solve exponential equations is this. Okay. You want to try and write both sides of the equation as a single term with the same base. Okay, If we can do that, and you're going to need your index laws to be able to do that, if we can do that, then the solving of the equation is simple and does not require any logarithms whatsoever. Okay, So let's solve these examples. Um, so solve each of the following. So if we can write both sides as a single term with the same base, that's our first goal. Okay, so the first example is 5 to the power of x equals 125. It's important when you're working with indices that you are pretty familiar with your basic um, index facts. So I recognize that 125 is 5 cubed. Um, you really should know, um, you know, 2 to the power of up to a power of about 6 or 7, um, 3 up to a power of maybe 4, um, you know, maybe 4 up to 4, 5, 6 up to a power of 3. 7 up to a power of 3 maybe, you sh those should be numbers that you recognise as being a power of, so I should see 125 and recognise that that is 5 cubed. So if they're number facts that are not very strong for you, you know, write yourself up a poster, stick it on the back of the toilet door, look at them regularly, put them somewhere you're going to see them often, um, and just start to build up your familiarity with those facts. Okay, so if 5 to the power of x is equal to 5 to the power of 3, the only way that is true is if x is equal to 3. Okay, on the right, on question two, we've got 2 to the power of n minus 4 equals 8 to the power of n minus 4. Now I'm looking at the bases, 2 and 8. They are both powers of 2, so I'm going to focus on writing everything with a base of 2 before I move on. So left-hand side already has a base of 2, 2 to the power of n minus 4. 8 is 2 cubed, and we have that to the power of 4 minus n. 
And then we know from our index laws when we are applying one power after another. Oh, sorry, I thought I had the highlighter there. When we're applying one power after another, we multiply those together. And so here we're going to multiply 3 times 4 minus n. So we have 2 to the power of n minus 4 equals 2 to the power of 12 minus 3n. Now we have both sides as a single power with the same base and we can equate the powers. So n minus 4 must be equal to 12 minus 3n. Uh, I'm going to add 3n to both sides. It gives me 4n here. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. It gives me 16 here. And so therefore n must be 16 divided by 4, which is 4. Okay, question 3. 3 to the power of x plus 1 times 27 to the power of x equals 9. So looking at those bases, they are all powers of 3. Let's focus on writing everything with a base of 3, and then we can look at solving. So we've got 3 to the power of x plus 1. 27 is 3 cubed, and 9 is 3 squared. And so we have 3 to the power of x plus 1 times, you multiply these powers, that's 3 to the power of 3x. Oops, sorry, 3x. Uh, equals 3 squared. Now, it's really tempting at this point to go, oh, right, so that times that equals that. That's not true. We need a single exponent equal to another single exponent. we still got some index laws to work on this left-hand side. When we're multiplying things with the same base, we add the powers. So this is 3 to the power of x plus 1 plus 3x is 4x plus 1, which is equal to 3 squared. Now we can equate the powers. 4x plus 1 is equal to 2. Subtracting 1 from both sides, 4x equals 1, and so therefore x is equal to, oh, sorry, I've got another question there, I'll squeeze it in here, x is equal to 1 quarter. Okay, finally, um, we have this example here, and this one is different, because I'm the first thing that I'm noticing here is that I've got addition and subtraction. Now, there are no index laws for when I'm adding or subtracting things with the same base, okay? 2 to the power of 3 plus 2 to the power of 4 is not 2 to the power of 7 or 2 to the power of 12 or whatever. There's no rule for combining those together. You work those things out separately and then you add them together. Okay. So the minute I'm saying addition or subtraction here, that rings some alarm bells for me that what I want to do is I want to try and recognize this as being another type of function and use a substitution to then be able to solve that other type of function and then come back to the exponential component of that function. So what I recognize here is that 5 to the power of 2x is the same as 5 to the power of x squared. And this is minus 6 times 5 to the power of x plus 5. And so this is actually a quadratic shaped function. It's sort of a quadratic in disguise. If it helps, you can solve it without making a substitution, but I find for most students it helps. So if I were to let u equal 5 to the power of x, you can use any letter you want. I always use u for some reason, but whatever you want. Some people use a or don't use x, obviously. x has another meaning, but any letter other than x. Um, so now the equation becomes u squared minus 6 times u plus 5. I focus on solving this equation for u, and then I go back and substitute 5 to the power of x back in place of u. So this is a quadratic, looking to factorise it, factors of positive 5 to add up to negative 6. Um, so that's going to be u minus 5 and u minus 1. And so therefore u is equal to 5 or u is equal to 1. But going back to our exponentials, we know that u is equal to 5 to the power of x. So this means that 5 to the power of x equals 5 and 5 is 5 to the power of 1. Or 5 to the power of x equals 1. Bearing in mind that 1 is 5 to the power of 0. Okay. And so therefore from this one we get x equals 1 and from this one we get x equals 0. Okay, so some work from exercise 5c here. So obviously not all equation, not all exponential equations will be able to be solved using this method. If I were to make this 124, 124 is not a power of 5 and so this method doesn't work at all. Um, but if it does work, this is going to be our first port of call. So we're looking for to express both sides as a single term with the same base and then we can equate the exponents. So exercise 5C.